Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Log Biology. In this uh, situation of COVID, mm, all of you stay at home first of all, and uh, obey your parents' orders. Don't go out. Most of the time, that's the first. Don't go out. Okay, anything if it is really necessary, then go. Otherwise, it's better to stay at home. Right. Uh, we shall talk about the COVID-19 letter. Now let's go and study our first chapter of today's class, that is cell structure and function. What is cell? The structural and functional unit of all the living organisms is known as cell. Look, what is structural? Structural means uh, cell do the fundamental unit, say, right? means uh, they develop the structure, they make up the body, they form the body. So that is it's a part of structural unit, right? And functional unit, functions mean whatever function is going on in your body, like if you take for example digestion, respiration, excretion, circulation, every function, each and every function, even a cell division, cell taking food or cell excreting, that's are all functions and it are all are controlled by cells, right? Because you know cells are formed at the unique panic particles, like like you know for matter it is atoms, so for living organism it is cells like that. Okay. Without cells there will be no existence, right? Cell makes up the basic fundamental unit. Right. So it is known as structural and functional, means it forms the structure, it forms the body as well as it controls all the functions. Right. Now who discovered the cell? Cell was discovered by Robert Hooke in 1665. Right. Means who discovered? Robert Hooke discovered the cell in 1665. Right. And you know Robert Hooke was a scientist. At that time there was means, no compound microscope. Okay, right. There was only simple microscope. Means using that simple microscope, he discovered cell. Means just imagine uh, how much talented at that time scientists were. Yes, nowadays also they are talented, but in their times when resources were so scarce, they thought and they brought so many things. Right? Means they had the imagination. We have to look inside the living thing. What is there? What is present inside that? Right? So what did he do? He took a piece of cork. Right? Cork. You know, you have seen uh, suppose in champagne bottle. You know, you have seen one cork, you play badminton, that cork, cork is, you know, that uh, spongy like part, that uh, thermocol that is attached to the end of the cork, right, in badminton, that is a cork, right, it is, means it is dead plant tissue, okay, I took a small slice of cork, right, then he examined under simple microscope, and what did he find, a numerous, means large number of compartment, honeycomb like structures, you know, honeycomb hexagon type, right, honeycomb like structures, and what does the honeycomb like structures he did the he the name that is cell right means to each, each and every chamber like for example i shall take suppose you have your house there are many rooms suppose you see or suppose robot to see see he saw it robot to saw there are many rooms and for each room he gave the name each chamber he gave the name those are same right well after cell was discovered just make a note of that right now let me tell you after cell was discovered you know there Scientists only have one duty. They will ask questions and they will invent things, they will discover things, and they will give us research about new things. Say. So the scientists thought if cell was discovered, then what is inside the cell? What can you find inside the cell? Each and everything that came into their mind, and thus there were two scientists, right? M. J. Sladen and Theodore Schwann. One was a geologist and one is a botanist. They studied the details about the cell, means the every minute details, not I cannot say very minute, but at the time every minute details they studied, right? And they formulated its theory that is known as we do today as cell theory. They found many facts. Suppose I shall tell you, suppose take the example of your room. Okay, you shall go into your room. You see, in your room there is a fan, there is a light bulb, there is a table, there is a chair, there is a bed. And suppose I shall tell you to write to explain about your room. So, what will you write? In my room, there is a table, there is a fan, like all these, there are four walls, there is a door, there are windows, right? Because these are all common about all the rooms in the world. All the rooms have such things, right? So, what did they do? All the cells are similar because all this, you know, similar things can only make of a living organism, right? Although they have different functions, but their structure is always similar, right? Now, see, when the structure is similar, they found, they formulated the cell theory, okay? Cell theory, first of all, they gave two theories, right? But well, one was all living organisms are composed of cells. Means each and every living organism, from a minute amoeba to a big elephant, big dinosaur, everything is composed of cells, right? And the second point that they gave that cell is the structural and functional unit of living organisms. You know, the basic definition of cell, I told you the first point. Cell is the structural and cell is the functional unit of all the living organisms, right? Structural means, I told, they form the structure, functional means, they constitute means, they 
perform every each and every function right so cell constitutes the structure and function unit of living organism well they gave this year period part time 1839 right and when was the cell discovered in 1665 they gave the theory in 1839 so just see the time gap means what much time they do right means what much time they do to just discover the cell okay now uh, another scientist was there uh, who has not given much credit right uh, although he gave a prominent part of his cell theory his name was rudolf virchow in 1855 they gave the emergence leiden and thyro swan they gave the same theory in 1839 whereas rudol virchow gave this theory in 1855 just imagine the time gap that is after 16 years okay he gave the another third point of the cell theory and did he say he you know all the uh, remember this one thing everything that is written in the scientific way for the whole world right that is always written in it, latin okay and is always done in italic means the style of the letters will be italic and the format will be latin okay so what did he say in the latin omni cellula e cellula just take a note omni cellula e cellula which means all cells arise from pre existing cells means suppose for take the example of you you are not born from a you know just came out of thin air or just drop who did give back to you your parents like that every cell has come from its previous cell means its previous generation from its parents okay no cell has come no cell has come means out of thin air means it cannot just some scientists you know gave theories that uh, from living matters uh, non living matters living matter arise those are means also false okay from only a single cell another cell can arise okay uh, you know cells means if we shall go about that uh, first how our earth was developed that is a totally different chapter but i shall just give you a you know little insight look first of all on earth was formed okay you know the earth was totally means there was lightning there was thunderstorms uh, earth was totally hot the well, lava okay there was lava all over the earth then when it rained those uh, lava means they become cold and they be- started to become igneous rocks in uh, some places those uh, water uh, became means now we call as oceans right those water were present in uh, large areas we call as oceans inside those oceans right bio molecules were formed means from simple hcn hydrogen carbon nitrogen oxygen okay so only from this simple atoms because at the time only simple atoms were present right only that simple atom at their time the atmosphere was oxidizing oxidizing means o2 was getting formed right so when o2 was getting formed from simple simple molecules are formed those simple molecules converge together from form bio molecules from those bio molecules cells are formed that is a totally different chapter of evolution we shall study that later right now only you remember that all cells arise from pre existing cells means a cell has it's always arise always arise from a pre existing cell right it cannot form out of thin air that is the notion omni cellula e cellula the third statement of cell theory it was given by rudolf virchow just take a note of all the points right is a important for the exam point of view suppose if you take like uh, in entrance exam this is very very important suppose who gave the third theory rudolf virchow these are very simple questions but this notion omni cellula e cellula is very important just remember that okay now let's move on to the next topic that is overview of cell right overview of cell overview means you know view you know to see overview means just Well, means clarify, man. Clearly, we shall see, right? The first point, you know. Uh, so, overview means we shall study about the you know, structure of the cells. What the cells are made of. What is man? Every minute and minute details. I shall tell you, give you overview about your body. You shall tell I have means my body. I have a head, eyes, ears, nose, hands like that. We shall study of cells. Okay. First of all, you know, whenever we study something, we always study from the outside in, not from the inside out. We always study from the outside in. So let's come from the outside. A cell is always surrounded by a cell membrane. Okay, in all all the cells, all the cells, cell membrane are present. However, cell wall is present in only in case of plant cells. Okay, now let's understand this statement: cell membrane and cell wall. Take the example of your house. Okay, your house. Uh, suppose first of all, take the example of a room. Okay, your room is surrounded by four walls. Okay, take that four walls. You know those four walls for protecting you from other outside things, from thieves. Okay, so those four walls. are your cell membrane right you are the cell you are inside okay all the constituents of cell that is bed table everything is of the room is inside okay take that as the constituents of cell parts of the cell they are inside those walls are the cell membrane right now take about the boundary of your room okay means the boundary of your house you have constituted boundary to protect yourself that boundary is known as the cell wall okay just example you are present in the room the four walls are the cell membrane And the boundary is the also covered on four sides. That is the cell wall. Okay. 
Now, cell wall is present only in plants, but in animals, only cell membrane is present. In plants, cell membrane is present, and surrounding the cell membrane is a cell wall, right? Now, this is the means you can differentiate. Like, cell wall is present only in plants, so you can see plants, the bark is so hard, but your body is so soft. You can touch it. Bark is hard, your body is soft, although it is dead matter, but that is because of the cell membrane, okay? Or oh, cell wall, sorry. Cell wall, it makes the plant a little hard, okay? Now, let's go to the inside. We have gone, gone from the outside, let's go to the inside, okay? Inside each cell, means inside each cell, a dense membrane is present. Means dense membrane is present, okay? Dense membrane means it is very dense, okay? Although cell membrane is little dense, but that membrane is very dense, okay? And inside that, a nucleus is present. You can call it as a heart of the cell, okay, right? Inside that, nucleus is present. It contains the chromosome and the chromosome contains the DNA. Okay, means nucleus performs the major functions of the cell. Major functions means nucleus helps in reproduction, cell division. Okay, and you know the uh, what are the organisms main notion of our organisms that we have to reproduce and we have to take our generation further and further. Okay, nucleus helps in that. Okay, it is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. The membrane, dense round membrane, it is a nuclear membrane. Right. Nucleus contains the chromosome, chromosome contains the DNA. These chromosomes and DNA, I can tell you, it is a part of the reproduction. You shall study it later. Okay. These chromosomes, this uh, DNA, they help in taking the materials, means hereditary materials from your from your parents' body to your body. Like you see some of you may be telling you that you look like your mother, characters like your father. How? How you look like your mother, your characters come from father? Like this is what happens, your DNA from your father and mother are combining you. Okay, those DNA transfer their hereditary materials to you. Means you also develop like them. Your structure may be similar, your face cutting may be like them, and that's why you gain so much similar appearance to your parents. Right? Now, cells that have membrane bound nuclei are called prokaryotic, eukaryotic, and those do not have a membrane inside outside their nuclei are called eukaryotic, prokaryotic. Now, let's see. Uh, so I shall take uh, tell you. Look, cell is present. Okay, inside it, nucleus is present. Right? Nucleus I told it uh, around nucleus, dense membrane-like structure is present. That is the nuclear membrane. Cells here can be differentiated into two types. One is prokaryotic, one is eukaryotic. Okay. In prokaryotic cells, the nucleus does not have a membrane. Okay. Nucleus does not have a nuclear membrane. However, in eukaryotic cells, there is a nuclear membrane present. It is dense and distinct. You can easily dis identify it but in prokaryotic cannot easily identify because there is no membrane around it okay so that is the difference between main difference between eukaryotic cell and prokaryotic cell just remember that okay and another next statement in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells okay there is a cytoplasm present which is the semi-fluid matrix okay semi-fluid means i shall tell you jelly type okay jelly you have eaten in your childhood is so sweet i also love it jelly okay you have eaten it uh, it is just like jelly type, okay. That cytoplasm, it is a semi-fluid dense material, okay. It is present in the cell. Now, coming to the point of nuclear membrane, now from eukaryotic and prokaryotic difference, okay. In prokaryotic, there is no nuclear membrane present. In eukaryotic, there is a nuclear membrane present. So, here comes the difference that you can easily identify the nucleus in the eukaryotic cell. Because there is a dense nuclear membrane present, it separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. However, in the same situation, in the prokaryotic cell, there is no membrane present. So it does not differentiate, right? You can understand it. It does not differentiate. You cannot easily identify it, right? Okay. So this is the main difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. Now let's move to the next topic. Besides the nucleus, you know, uh, I shall tell what? I have told nucleus is the heart, right? I shall tell you have a heart. But does that mean that you have no other body parts? So you know, so it's definitely not. I have many other body parts like that. In the eukaryotic cells, besides the nucleus, there are many distinct structures, many parts, like organelles. Means when I will tell what are your hands, hair, nose, eyes, these are called. You shall tell these are called my body parts, like that. But the structures inside the cells present, the body parts of the cells, they are called organelles. Fine. There are distinct structures called are organelles. Organelles are the body parts of the cells. Right. Some of the organelles are endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, lysosomes, vacuoles, mitochondria, microbodies, etc. etc. You shall study in the next class. Okay. Means these all structures are present inside the cell, right? These are the body parts of the cell. Now let's move to the size of the cell. Okay, let me drink water, then we shall move. Okay, uh, moving to the size of the cell. You know, cells uh, are uh, so minute structure you cannot see to the naked eye, except only a single cell. That is, egg. Egg is a single cell. Okay. 
एक अपन ऑस्ट्रिस द लार्जेस्ट आइसोलेटेड सिंगल सेल ओनली दिस सेल यू कैन सी विथ नेकेड आई अदर सेल यू कैन नेवर सी विथ नेकेड आई यू हैव टू यूज अ माइक्रोस्कोप बस दिस ऑस्ट्रिस सेल इट इज द रिमेंबर इट इज द लार्जेस्ट सेल इन द वर्ल्ड जस्ट नोट दिस पॉइंट द लार्जेस्ट सेल इज द एग ऑफ एन ऑस्ट्रिस ओके ऑस्ट्रिस यू नो शत्रुमर्ग व्हिच कैन नॉट फ्लाई द इंग्लिश वर्ड ओके एग ऑफ एन ऑस्ट्रिस इट इज द लार्जेस्ट सेल ओके नाउ द स्मॉलेस्ट सेल The smallest cell are the mycoplasmas. They have size zero point three to zero point zero five mu meter. Okay, zero point three to zero point five mu meter. Whereas the bacteria size is three to five mu meter. Okay, means just imagine bacteria. These are disease causing organisms. You know that disease causing microorganisms. You cannot see them with naked eye. You have to use a microscope. Now see the mycoplasmas are ten times smaller than the bacteria. So just imagine how small can they be. You cannot imagine how small can they be. You can only see them through the microscope. and they get it okay just don't imagine just let that okay study next now about human red blood cells human red blood cells you know rbc uh, that is that gives the color red that is uh, hemoglobin present iron present which gives our blood red color okay this rbc they are about 7.5 mm in diameter okay they are you know some uh, kind of they are circular in spherical that is uh, flat in the middle okay these are human red blood cells now let's move to the longest cell longest cell are the nerve cells okay Something must have wrong in your mind. What is nerve cell? I must have heard. Right. Like, this is the work of the nerve cell. When you hear something, nerve cells deliver the message. Nerve cell is the part of means this is the unique part of your nervous system. In tenth class, ninth class, you must have read nervous system, the brain, your spinal cord. They are all parts of your nervous system. Right. Like, these nerve cells they transfer the message from one part of your body to the other through via the brain. The brain transmits all these messages through the nerve cells. Okay. These are the longest cells. They consist of axon, dendrites. This We shall study in the nervous system. There is a chapter. Okay, we shall study there. What are the parts of the nerve cells? Right. These are some of the longest cells. Okay. Just remember this: the largest cell is the egg of an ostrich. The smallest cells are the mycoplasmas, and the longest cells are the nerve cells. These three short questions easily come in the exam. Just remember all this. Okay. So today we shall study only this much. Right. Now, if you have any doubts, okay. If you have any doubts, then you can tell that in the comment section. Right. I shall clarify each and every doubt individually. Okay, don't think that no, uh, I will not be clarified each and every doubt. I shall clarify. Although I think there will be no doubts in just this was an introduction class, but still, if you are facing any doubts, just comment it. I shall clear each and every doubt. Okay, I shall solve each and every doubt in the next class. Right, first of all, we shall discuss the doubts. Okay, then we shall cover each and every details that about the cells overview of cells. We also next class we shall be studying about the parts of the cells. Okay, right. So thank you.